Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Building a Better Future, Reap Green Solutions Community Impact Report. I'm Mary Jane Patterson, Executive Director of Reap Green Solutions. We're presenting today on the Haldeman Tract, the traditional territory of the neutral, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee peoples. We offer our respect to their elders and our commitment to join in stewardship of this land. Thank you all for taking time on this beautiful fall afternoon to celebrate local sustainability and to launch our ambitious community impact goal. And here it is. By 2030, people impacted by Reap Green Solutions have taken 10,000 meaningful actions to collectively shift our community to a resilient, low carbon future. So how do we build that beautiful future? For the next few minutes, we'll share the impressive actions of Waterloo Region residents who've already been planting trees, tearing up pavement, and reducing their footprint with our support. That's our fast and zippy community impact report for our work this past year. And then Michael Wood, chair of our board, will join me to explain our community impact goal and how you can join the movement towards 10,000 meaningful actions. Finally, as part of our look to building a better future, we're delighted to host a Q&A with Sila Outsorn, local youth climate act advocate. Sila is a student here in Kitchener who uses her YouTube channel to educate people about sustainability and to influence people to join the climate action movement. We cannot build a better future without the support of dynamic youth like Sila. Before we go any further, I want to say a very big thanks to our generous event sponsors, longtime supporter of REAP's work, Menno S. Martin, and frequent partner, Kindred Credit Union. Thank you both for making this event possible. Special thanks also to in-kind sponsor, Jural Communications. REAP Green Solutions is an environmental charity. We help you live sustainably. Let's take a look at how we did that this past year. 2019 was a busy year at Reef Green Solutions, but what does one year of sustainability look like in our community? Let's see what our community did with the support of Reef Green Solutions in 2019. Our tree stewardship program was launched this year in partnership with the City of Cambridge and the City of Kitchener. Our goal? empower residents to care for trees and take on a stewardship role in maintaining an urban forest. Through our workshops, over 160 participants have learned how to sustain our urban forest. We've also worked with 96 homeowners in our backyard tree planting program to provide education on tree care and plant 77 trees in backyards around Kitchener and Cambridge. Climate Action Waterloo Region is a collaboration between local organizations and community members focused on climate change mitigation. It is co-led by Reap Green Solutions and Sustainable Waterloo Region. We are working together with community members, municipalities, organizations, and experts from across the region to develop a plan for reaching our collective goal of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. This past year, we asked for the community's vision for the year 2050 and received over 500 responses. We're looking forward to putting your visions into action with our long-term climate action plan. Thanks to funding from the region of Waterloo and additional support from the University of Waterloo, we were able to bring the Project Neutral Carbon Calculating Tool to over 900 households in the region, representing over 2,500 household members. REAP's team of water auditors had a busy year, showing high water users where they consume the most water and how to reduce it. Our educational workshops continued this fall and winter with the support of municipal partners in Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, and Guelph, helping to make our communities more beautiful and resilient. Depave Paradise is a unique program created by our umbrella organization, Green Communities Canada. The goal is to dig up underused paved spaces and turn them into lush green landscapes for communities to enjoy. This year, REAP supported the depaving of two local spaces, 
working with the New Hamburg Board of Trade and Keatsway Public School. It was exhilarating to see parents, students, teachers, business owners, and residents rip up 150 square meters of pavement and turn it into beautiful green space for everyone to enjoy. Our fourth annual Zero Waste Challenge kicked off in October. In one month alone, 140 people and 48 pets took part in reducing their non-recyclable, non-compostable waste and fitting it into a one liter mason jar. Reap Green Solutions reached an important milestone this year and held our biggest community event yet to celebrate it. The Fresh Air Feast was an outdoor family-focused picnic with activities, delicious food, and fun games to celebrate 20 years of Reap Green Solutions and community action. Our team here at Reap Green Solutions continues to be blown away by the commitment of our community to create more sustainability, more resilience, and more positive impact for the next generation. And we can't wait to see what the future will bring. Wow, what a lot of community action. We are always inspired by the people we get to work with in your homes and your backyards and by your dedication to taking climate action in your lives. And we're really grateful to support you on that journey, however we can, whether you're well on your way or just getting started. Now I'd like to welcome Michael Wood, our board chair, to join me to talk about our new community impact goal. Michael, come. Hello everyone. Let's start with REAP's longtime vision of the future we want to achieve. We believe by acting today, we can leave our children a community that is more resilient, vibrant, and caring, and sustainable. That statement reflects what we've been working towards for over the past 20 years, helping communities increase flood resilience and families reduce their carbon footprints. However, something major shifted in our world the day the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released their 2018 report. This game-changing report stated that in order to avoid cataclysmic impacts for climate change, the earth cannot grow warmer than 1.5 degrees Celsius. Lowering emissions to this degree will require widespread changes in industry, buildings, transportation, and cities, all by 2030. Yeah, I remember when that report came out, Michael, and uh, the headlines were scary. We felt small and insignificant in rising to that challenge, the tremendous task of such huge carbon reductions by 2030. But at the same time, our community was already recognizing the challenge. Together, we set an ambitious greenhouse gas reduction target for Waterloo Region of 80% by 2050. So here at REAP, we step back to ask ourselves, what's our part in achieving that goal and helping our community adapt to climate change at the same time? We've got many program participants and partners that are passionate about sustainability. What do we want REAP's impact to be over these next critical 10 years? Well, Mary Jane, as you know, uh, as a board, we took nine months, three day long workshops, numerous coaching ses sessions with staff and meetings to create this plan of impact. The goal that emerged is this. By 2030, people impacted by REAP Green Solutions have taken 10,000 meaningful actions to collectively shift our community to a resilient, low carbon future. Now, how will we achieve this goal? By engaging people just like you on a sustainability journey with our community partners and using a neighborhood approach, advocating our leadership for large scale climate action. Well, that sounds wonderful. Let's take a few minutes to break down what some of that means. For instance, you might ask, why 10,000 actions and not people? Well, it's actions that lead to the carbon reductions and the green landscapes that we wanna see. We felt if we focused on the number of people we reach, it could steer our work to shallow actions with as many people as possible and lose that opportunity for deeper, more meaningful impact. We wanna meet people where you are, walk alongside you on your sustainability journey and support the deeper actions as you move from workshops to home audit to making changes. It might start with reducing waste at home and then exploring energy efficiency improvements or planting trees. People are certainly the focus and the actions are what will count. 
The number 10,000 was also an important goal for us. We supported approximately 10,000 home energy upgrades and other meaningful actions over the past 20 years. This target challenges us to double our impact over the next 10 years while maintaining meaningful actions rather than going broader and shallower. It's an ambitious goal that we look to forward to surpassing. So what do we mean by meaningful actions? Any action that leads to greenhouse gas reductions or reduces flood risk counts. Completing home energy retrofits, for example, making the shift to sustainable transportation like cycling, transit, or an electric vehicle, planting trees or planting a rain garden, changing our behavior to conserve water or send less waste to the landfill. These are all meaningful actions. And what do we mean by that last phrase, to collectively shift our community to a resilient, low carbon future? Well, that reflects the change we wanna see, collectively, because it's about all of us acting together to achieve something no one person can do alone. We wanna move away from our reliance on carbon fuels and be prepared for the changes that are already happening because of them. Let's keep building a resilient community that's actively pursuing a shift to a clean economy and sustainable living. So you're probably now wondering, how can you be part of the 10,000 meaningful actions? First, connect with Reap Green Solutions. Join the conversations we're having on social media and have fun learning with the resources we're sharing in our sustainable living newsletter. We will send you an email in the coming week with some suggested next steps in your sustainability journey and how you can join this movement. So keep an eye out for that. Mm -hmm. We are honored to support your sustainability journey. Let's hear now from someone who, in response to our outreach in her Kitchener neighborhood, chose to support Reap's work. Here's Marion. My name is Marion Calderborn. I'm a resident of the city of Kitchener and I live in the Lakeside Park neighborhood. I first heard about REAP actually in 2012 when I had an energy audit done on my house. Besides the energy audit, uh, we were fortunate a few years ago to have REAP come to our neighborhood and offer the Rain Smart program. We were one of two neighborhoods that were picked for this program. And through this program, residents here at Lakeside learned how to manage stormwater or rainwater on our properties. That allowed us to contain stormwater on our properties and not have it run down the road and go into rivers and streams and possibly cause flooding. It also helped us to keep the water so that it would go down into the aquifers and plus keep our drinking water cleaner. I value health. My background is in health. I value a healthy environment. And I really think that all the programs that REAP offers give residents uh, tools and actions that they can take in their own home, on their own property, in their own community, where we can see benefits of using the information that we get from REAP and helping us to to try and prevent some of the things that we see coming with climate change and helping to make our lives better and our community better. It just seems like you have so many programs that hit areas that, that often we want to have a solution for, but we might not know how to address it. And you guys give us those tools and the actions that we can take. So I look at, at you uh, as a positive organization that we could support through our donations not only for us, but I think for future generations too, we have to do this. So I just see it as a way that I can contribute to something that I think is very important, not only for me, but for the wider community as well. Marion, we are so grateful for donors like you. That support makes a big difference to our community-based programs. So we offer our deep thanks to all of you and our donor family. If you're thinking about how to invest your charitable contributions this year, donating to REAP's work is one way to support practical climate action right here at home. 
and that donation will help us take meaningful impact action on climate change locally. Now I'm glad to pass it over to Danique Williams, our communications manager for a conversation with youth climate advocate, Sila Outsorn. I'm honored to welcome Sila. As part of our look into a brighter future, I'm delighted to host a Q&A with Sila, who's a local youth climate advocate. She is a 13-year-old student based in Kitchener who uses her YouTube channel, Bean TV, to educate people on sustainability and to influence us to join the climate action movement. We need to recognize that in order to build a better future, we must hear the voices of youth, especially those who are leading the movement right now. And youth like Sila are already cultivating the future that we want to build. So we're so glad that she has come here to talk to us about it. Welcome, Sila. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so excited to be here. To begin, how did you start your sustainability journey? What inspired you to take action on climate change? Yeah, so for as long as I can remember, I've just always really enjoyed getting out into nature. I really love being around other animals and learning from them, I guess. So now this might sound like a silly story, but I remember one time when I was a lot younger, I discovered a fly uh, which appeared to be dead in my living room. I walked over to it and thought I should give it CPR, which I actually learned how to do from attending a vet camp that summer. To my surprise, it seemed to actually work. It got up and flew away. <laughs> That's when my itsy bitsy grade one self discovered that my actions have an impact on the other species around me. I didn't know if it was possible to revive that fly that day, but simply because I tried, I guess I saved a life. So it turns out flies don't actually have hearts. They have a blood-like substance that actually flows throughout their body. And so what I did was reactivated that flow through muscle contraction. So not CPR, but sort of similar. That tiny insect motivated me to go around and see other ways that I could help other living things. Um, so in grade two, I started to host a lot of fundraisers out, out in my yard to raise money for endangered species. And some of my grade two classmates actually joined in with me. I think at that time I was aware that um, it was humans, human activity that was causing this suffering and causing these species to go endangered. But I'd say that when I really realized the extent of the issue was when I joined an area enrichment class, um, which is where like-minded kids who wanna get more out of school can come together once a week instead of going to their home schools and meet up with each other. We got to do lots of fun projects that interested us. I knew that polar bears were, were endangered because of something called climate change. In that class, my first year there was when I decided to do a project on it and I actually realized the extent of that issue. Human burning fossil fuels is changing long-term weather patterns very quickly. Species as well as us humans are unable to adapt to these sudden changes and we're, we're in a mass extinction. By 2060, the climate crisis could actually become as deadly as the coronavirus crisis. It's a crisis and it should be treated like one. Why did you start your YouTube channel, Bean TV? And can you tell us a little bit about the other projects that you've started? There are two reasons I started my YouTube channel, Be Action Now TV, or for short, Bean TV. Number one was that I wanted it to be the forefront of conversation. So why did we treat the COVID-19 pandemic like the crisis that it was? It's because in response to that crisis, our government chose to make drastic changes in response to it very suddenly which has not yet happened with the environmental crisis. They may be drastic changes, but they're for the greater good of society. All across the media, they give us daily reports on how many cases are in our area. Education and spreading awareness, as you can see, are very important when it comes to taking action. And that's the same for any crisis. So with a YouTube channel, I could educate other people on what was going on and show them the ways that they could make a difference in their life. Creating educational videos was a way that I could spread awareness and make it the forefront of conversation for people in my community. And number two was that I hope to make connections with like-minded people um, 
and to learn about the ways that they were making a difference so I could improve myself as well. I think I learned that that was very important from being in an enrichment class, as I mentioned before, where I was with other like-minded people who wanted to go beyond the curriculum. And that taught me how important a strong community is, where we we feel free to share our ideas. There's many fantastic things that people all over the world are doing to make a difference. I wanted to learn more about that and interview them and connect with them so I could help support them and share it with others as well to form a strong community, which is very important for <laughs> taking action. And it's also really good for reminding ourselves that we aren't alone. We can. <laughs> we can. So Sila, what do you say to our local decision makers and community leaders? What do you want them to take away from today to build a better future? Like I said earlier, I think a, that our local leaders did a really good job uh, at spreading awareness for the coronavirus crisis by giving us updates on the kinds of things that was happening. And I think that would be super cool if we did the same for the climate crisis. One thing that I thought was if we had um, just like the daily updates on how many cases in our area, um, we could provide the same thing for how many uh, greenhouse gas emissions our area produced so that we could sort of see how that fluctuates and figure out ways that we can flatten that curve too. And another thing that is very crucial that we need to do is shift away from animal agriculture. It's not sustainable. It's actually the leading cause of greenhouse gas production. It's even higher than the transportation industry. And it's also just not fair to the animals. I actually did an interview with a company in Holland called Moza Meat, and they have a super cool solution that, like there's all these plant-based alternatives that we could use, but there's actually a way that, uh, that we can grow meat from cells instead of raising an animal, which is way more sustainable. Um, by feeding that cell nutrients and growing it like that, um, which is what Moza Meat is doing. So if we could shift over to that, so we could continue to eat meat, but without killing the animals. Thank you so much, Sila, for joining us. Um, how can people keep in touch with you and see what you're doing next? Uh, where can they find you? Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun and I, I'm really thankful to have the opportunity to share my ideas. If you want to um, uh, see more about the kinds of things that you could do to make a difference, my YouTube channel is Be Action Now TV, uh, and my Instagram, if you'd like to message me about any collaboration or something that you'd like to do, um, my Instagram is be.action.now.tv. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you again, Sila, for joining us. Um, make sure that you guys go out and uh, subscribe to Sila's YouTube channel and follow her and her amazing sustainability journey. Um, she is really a leader in our community, and we're so excited to see what she does next. Um, yeah, so over to Mary Jane for our closing remarks. Well, thanks, Danique. And Sila, your enthusiasm is absolutely contagious. It's so great to see how you're sharing that passion for climate action with others. Thank you for everything you're doing. As we close, I'd like to thank Menno S. Martin and Kindred Credit Union for your generous sponsorship. And we'd also like to extend a special thank you again to Dural Communications for lending us staff support for this event. To all of you that have joined us, look for an email in the coming week with some steps for your sustainability journey and some fun ways you can join us in this movement. The zero waste challenge is coming right up. That's, that can be the first step. We are excited for what's in store and like Sila, we really look forward to building a better future together. Thanks everybody. Have a great afternoon.